think people watching from the outside who maybe aren't aligned with these two individuals want to see that fight. And I think that's what you're seeing is the is the ginning up of the fight. And what's getting missed is the policies behind what they're trying to accomplish. And I, that's what I'm saying is I think before it comes to the end, they're going to work it out. I think it's going to get worked out in some way a that meeting. it's not either a meeting of the minds or you're going to see. I, I don't I think both of them will recognize that a head to head in the state of Florida going down is not the way to go. But, I, you know, I would, as I said way earlier, I would never pretend to try to speak for whatever I thought Donald Trump may or may not do, because that's a little bit of a wild card. <laughs> but then to answer the question, Tara, for the everyday Joe and Jane that asked me on the street and they say, why won't Trump just bring DeSantis onto his ticket? They can run together and bring that red wave across the entire I th country. I think it's a great question. And I think that Governor DeSantis actually was ginned up for the fight by former President Trump himself when Trump came out and called him, you know, a name, um, which I'm not going to give oxygen because it's not good to do that. But but I think so Trump is is sort of egging this on. And perhaps the undercurrent that nobody wants to talk about is that these are two very um, strong uh, political figures that um, have a lot of ego, and that ego is attractive to a lot of individuals in the party, and, and, and not in the party, clearly. And so the, the undercurrent is that they are sizing each other up, and, but I do think the senator's right. I think at the end of the day, there's going to be some type of negotiation that makes, um, makes a Republican candidate. Uh, but I don't know if that negotiation won't come from a certain amount of persuasion, and that persuasion might come from uh, former President Trump actually using his uh, his bully pulpit of sort of a former president to sort of manipulate this. A lot can happen. So I think somebody ought to Google the word Trump in negotiation and see how often that pops <laughs> the, up. The art of the deal. Yeah, yeah, not too much. <laughs> Look, let's be clear what happened on January 6th. Mm -hmm. It was a threat to our country. There's a lot of very principled conservatives that acknowledged that it was a terrible event, and Donald Trump celebrates that on certain days. He's all, he said he's going to pardon the people that were up there. Let's think about that for a minute. I mean, that's a threat to our country. And tonight, people are getting elected to Congress who want him to be the president again. Well, but that brings, that brings us to the point of electability, because there is this widespread belief across the country that Governor DeSantis is the more electable candidate and could capture independence across country. We did not, there was no preventing us talking about 2024 tonight, by the way, especially with the races being called as early as they did. So it's only natural for us to be talking about Florida's political future because people want to know if Governor DeSantis is going to really serve a four-year term. We have noted, Tara, you and I, about how he has an overwhelming amount of money in that war chest after raising just just gobs of money. I don't even, where did that money come from? I mean, just the amount of money that he raised is, is just gargantuan. I got and, daily tweets. I'm sure other people did too. So I, mean, <laughs> I think was, though what Jim is bringing up is really uh, a point that, that we probably need to shift into to be responsible. And it's not just that January 6th was um, on the ballot, but election denying and the fidelity to our principles of having an election. 60% 60 per, 60 of America is voting on a candidate that actually denied the election. And some of them are in Florida. And so that is something that we have to consider um, when you're talking about DeSantis versus Trump and whether they can come together, who, will it who would it advantage to allow those people to be elected? And what will Florida say about that? And does Florida want to be a part of that, that wave of denying the fidelity to the principles of our elections?